Hello, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas and PNW Wine Life and Style. I'm letting my wine people into the stream today. We normally don't do our Amazon live broadcasts over to PNW Wine Life and Style, but I know a lot of you like food and cookbooks and cooking and pairing wine with food. So I thought I would give you a little preview today of our cookbooks that we're thinking about using to bake and cook for Christmas. So my day job is running Cookbook Divas, a blog that you guys might not know about. Let me start off my Amazon Live. Ooh, I'm going to turn off the sound in case someone loads up a video. So this is a shopping live stream, but we don't do heavy on the sales or anything like that. That's no fun. Let me make sure I'm in my Amazon Live that I can have some moderation privileges just in case someone gets naughty. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. So I have a whole bunch of cookbooks I want to look through with you today. We're welcoming our friends over on Amazon Live. Be sure to drop me a comment and say hello. I'm going to try to see them. So we'll start off with chatting about my Logitech Brio 4K webcam that I'm using. I have not yet upgraded to a DSLR, and the camera is so fancy that I kind of had to upgrade my laptop and my desktop a little bit so I could use it. And good news, Instagram just gave us over at pnwwinelife.com, which you can see in the scrolling ticker behind me, gave us permission to stream live to Instagram. I tried it out this morning. It did not go well. <laughs> There were some software hiccups, but I will be able to go live on Instagram more often and chat with you about local wineries, food, restaurants, etc. And I'm currently over in Chelan, so I'll be sharing stuff about Chelan also. I am using a Blue Yeti USB microphone that is 11% off today. Oh, no, 31%, even better than that. It's a podcasting microphone. I have it right here. It's supposed to be right in front of my face, but it doesn't look pretty in front of my face. I should have gotten a red one. And I wanted to begin the stream by chatting about my candles. I forgot to turn on. They are flameless and they're unscented, which is great for people that are serving wine and gourmet food for dinner. You don't want to have any fragrances. Uh, I've had three kitchen fires in five years, so we don't have a lot of candles lit in my house anymore although only one of those three fires was a candle. So I like flameless candles. They're good for kids' rooms, dorms, et cetera, anywhere you don't want to have a real flame. These are wax, so you don't want to have them near a heat source, maybe not on top of your fireplace mantle. We're going to look at cookbooks in just a couple minutes. Kind of make sure I have my YouTube friends over here. Yes, we have YouTube people joining us. You're going to see me drinking my tea, which today is Earl Grey from Twining's out of my merry and bright campfire mug. It keeps it hot longer because this is galvanized steel. So I actually could burn my fingers if I had just poured hot boiling tea into this. You can also use it to keep cold water cold longer. I don't want cold water today because I'm in Chelan and it's minus one degrees outside. So I'm gonna have a happy snow day. Wanted to let those of you on Amazon know that I'm going to be streaming Christmas trivia with a $25 gift certificate, Amazon gift certificate for the winner at 1 p.m. PST, which is four o'clock on the East Coast. So this campfire mug is really cute, but you don't want to put it in the dishwasher because this would probably wear off, as would the, the gold color. I can't say it's gold, but it's gold color around the rim. And this is metal, so no microwave. So I drink my tea very quickly. This wouldn't work for my boyfriend because he wanders off around the house, takes a sip and comes back an hour later and goes, oh, my coffee's cold and he has to nuke it again. So he can't use this one. Let's get started with a cookbook. I meant to talk about reindeer food. Can't find it. It is somewhere on a bookshelf in this house that's full of books. So we're going to scoot on from that one. We're going to check out Advent, our first cookbook of the day. Ooh, and my cookbooks are trying to fall over. This is Festive German Bakes to celebrate the coming of Christmas. It came out last year to great fanfare. Anja Dunk, or Anya Dunk is the author. I never did learn how to pronounce her name. It is a gorgeous cookbook, baking book. Some of the bakes, let's be honest, many of them are above my pay grade, my skill level. I'm not very good at making them. The chapters... She starts off on baking, ingredients, pantry supplies, blah, blah, blah. And then the 24 chapters of Advent 
Then she talks about cookie cutters, vegan recipe index, gluten-free recipe index. I really appreciate that. We're going to skip over the beginning of the book where she's talking about baking tips, etc. All right, chapter one. Salt dough. And I'm not going to try to attempt the German pronunciations. Sorry, we don't want to have your ears bleeding. Chapter two, Liebkuchen. Okay, I just did attempt a German pronunciation. Liebkuchen spice mix. And Liebkuchen hearts. This book has gorgeous photography. You're going to be hungry by the time we're done looking through this. Liebkuchen all sorts with sprinkles on top to look really pretty and festive. Jam filled Liebkuchen hearts. Very cute. Let's get to the next chapter. I'm not allowed to show you the entire cookbook, but we'll flip through a little bit. Chapter three, Advent breakfast. Oh, fun. So this book isn't just sweet pastry baked goods. There's also some savory, like seeded rye rolls. This would be a fantastic hostess gift if you are staying somewhere at someone's house over the next week and they're a fantastic cook and baker that might already own this. But if not, you could bring this gaily wrapped as a gift for them if they're going to be doing lots of cooking and baking for you. And don't forget to help clean up the kitchen. Spiced rye rolls. Ooh, too spicy for me. Poppy seed snails. Well, I wish they hadn't called them that because I just lost my appetite, but that's okay. Twice baked biscuits, walnut and cinnamon rusks. Let's jump ahead. Rich fruit loaf. That could be a little dry, so I would follow the recipe carefully and drink it with lots of tea with it. Dried pear fruit loaf. Dark side of the library is here. Hello, good morning. You are going to a restaurant today in Bellevue. I'd love to know where, because I'm nosy. Spiced marzipan bites. Be sure to check out Dark Side of the Library. She talks about dark winter reads, horror books, horror trivia, horror films, ghost stories, etc. Drop your link in the chat, please. Almond domes. We're going to skip ahead. Number seven, Christmas markets. I love the illustrations in this. Okay. I'd like to frame that one, frankly. Cinnamon roast almonds. I wouldn't take the time to make these because you can buy them. That's just not something I would spend time doing, but check out Christmas fried dough. Ooh, yum. I am doing something unusual today at Dark Side of the Library. I'm actually streaming to PNW Wine Life and Style on Facebook and YouTube also. Although I'm not going to talk about wine very much. Mostly we're just talking about cookbooks, but I figure people that love wine also love eating and serving food with wine. So if you get bored, you can always stop watching. I'm not offended. We got people watching over on Cookbook Divas Facebook. Welcome. So flam cooking. Sounds to me like a burning cake, but that's probably not what it, what it means. But it's really pretty. It has seeds and things on top. I think it's savory. Let's jump ahead a little bit. This is the Christmas markets chapter. Here's the stolen chapter. Am I saying that right? Is it stolen or stolen? I don't know. Christmas S word. Stolen. Anna Raquel. Hey, please show the cover. Welcome. Thank you, Kamani Mason. Happy holidays. This is Advent. I think I've looked through this before, Anna. Oh, look at this beautiful loaf. Woo! What is that? Let's find out. Is that the Christmas stolen they were talking about a second ago? Poppy seed stolen. Okay. Next chapter. Oh, stolen bites. I got to get out of this chapter. This one is patterned biscuits. Oh, cute. Christmas spiced shortbread. Now, this is a book from the UK, so they call Cookies, biscuits. We call them cookies here in America. Chocolate shortbread. Yes, please. That would be great with my morning tea. Dark Side of the Library dropped her link over on Amazon. Look at these cute Christmas swirls. Flan was a savory one. I don't know if we just saw flan unless I skipped over. Spiced almond biscuits. Cute. They're shaped like little snowflakes. I don't personally need to see any more snowflakes right now. I don't know about you guys, but it's been snowing a lot. And I'm looking out the window at snow. I don't need to see it on my plate right now. I love snow, though. Cinnamon stars. And I really like that. I can't really go anywhere today. It's too dangerous, so I'm stuck at home. Darn it, with my dogs and my cookbooks and my kitchen full of flour and sugar and eggs ready to bake. White pepper spiced biscuits. 
and I have Netflix for later and some wine. Last night I opened, for those of you watching from PNW Wine Life, I opened a Tory Moore White Rose Vineyard Pinot Noir. Wow. And I didn't really pair it with anything. I think I was eating some crackers, a little bit of cheese. Perfect day to be inside, yes. I just wish I had a fireplace. Nut biscuits chapter, nut batons. Ooh, this is pretty. Chocolate on the ends. Here is a chapter on chocolate biscuits or cookies. Here they are, chocolate peppermint biscuits. I was just a guest host on a virtual Christmas party and one of their guests was from Australia and said, she said, down there, people don't really pair pe peppermint with chocolate and they don't really eat peppermint hot cocoa. I'm like, really? I'd never heard of that. Uh, that was the Procrasta Baking Podcast. Chocolate Kisses. The name of this is Shako Kubchen, I think. Part of my pronunciation. Here's a chapter on wreaths and plates. Oh, I remember the pictures from this chapter. Braided raisin bread. And a Christmas wreath. I would love to try and make this this year. I might. I think I have the ingredients except for those red, um, what are they? Raisins, chopped cherries that are, mm, I don't think I have those. That's okay. I can make up for it. Here's an onion plate. Yum. I love savory bakes because I can't eat too much sugar all the time. Here's a walnut and camembert wreath. Those of you just joining us, we're looking through Advent on Amazon. It is on sale today, 10% off. It's $31.38 for the hardcover. And of course, the Kindle version is a little less. Meringues. I don't make or eat meringues. I don't know about you guys. But they gave you a recipe to make little edible wreaths for the tree. That's cute. And here are meringue mice. And a meringue wreath with hot raspberries. No. No, I'm sorry. That looks like junk. That looks horrible. No, for me, that's a misfire. Okay, <clears throat> next chapter, coffee and cake. Oat waffles. Sounds too healthy. I can't. <gasps> this is beautiful. A marzipan snowflake cake. Looks like they had a stencil and then shook the powdered sugar on top. And... The deck, tree decorations, some more edible stuff to put on the tree, fun. Dried apple rings, I've never tried making those. I've accidentally dried apples, not on purpose. Butter biscuits, I thought it said bitter for a second, I was like, why would you? Oh, butter biscuits, okay. Vanilla crescents, sandy shortbread, coffee fondant, fondant biscuits, it's actually pronounced fondant, but Americans say fondant. So I say fondant so I don't sound pretentious when I go fondant. Gingerbread house. Oh, I love gingerbread houses. You guys, I was thinking of putting together some gingerbread houses today. I'd have to clean off this desk that's right here. And I'd have to put my second camera so you could see what I was doing. Because I don't, if I set up in my kitchen, I'm moving the computer and the lighting. And the cameras, mm, too much work. So I might do that today. If you think it would be fun to watch me put together gingerbread houses and laugh because I'm making a mess, let me know in the comments and I might do it. But I have to have several people who are going to watch and chat. This is Swiss Peaks and Espresso Refrigerator Chocolates. Chapter 22, Marzipan Sweets. I used to actually make little marzipan figures, but I wasn't very good at it and they looked really dumb. Mold wine. All right. There's a mold wine recipe for those of you watching us on PNW Wine Life and Style. Christmas schnapps. So those of you on PNW Wine Life and Style, I wanted to invite you to check out not only our Amazon shopping channel at Amazon Live, the address is going to scroll by, but did you know I run a cookbook blog called Cookbook Divas? I don't think most of you have seen that. So check it out. We could always use the followers and we love chatting about cookbooks with you. That was Advent festive German bakes to celebrate the coming of Christmas. Today, I'm a little nervous because we're streaming to a couple YouTube channels, a couple Facebook channels, an Amazon channel, and it, I would be live on Instagram if I could. I tried out the new feature streaming live to Instagram from my computer. It did not go so well, and I was nervous because I was testing it 
I was still in pajamas, had zero makeup on. I was like, this better not be a live camera. This better not work. Whew. Next cookbook we're going to look through is a fun one. The unofficial, if I can find where I put it, <laughs> unofficial Hogwarts for the holidays cookbook. And because it's red and I'm wearing red, it's going to mess up the camera a little bit. No, actually it worked. The unofficial Hogwarts for the holidays cookbook. It's by Rita Mock Pike and Ulysses Press is the publisher. They didn't have permission from J.K. Rowling to do this, blah, blah, blah. It says pumpkin pasties, treacle tart, and many more spellbinding treats. And I just heard a story of a lady who's in her 40s, and she was saying trick or treat wrong. She had been saying treacle treat all along and they corrected her and were like you didn't know that you've been saying treacle treat did you think people were knocking on the door asking for treacle <laughs> i'm not sure about this yellow you open it up and it's like whoa that's really yellow and my camera is hating that color <laughs> i guess it's trying to be the the gryffindor colors okay chapters fall recipes snacks for a train ride start of term feast halloween tea at the edge of the forest with a Talonless beet, beef casserole. I thought it said beet casserole. I'm not sure I want to eat a beet casserole. A ghostly death day party. Okay, winter recipes. This is what we're going to turn to. Christmas. Crumpets, roast turkey, leftover turkey sandwiches, chipolatas. Chipolatas? Did I say that right? Christmas pudding, cranberry sauce, butterscotch sauce, yum, eggnog, trifle, and then there's a Yule Ball recipe. Let's skip ahead. Whoa, we don't need to look at Halloween recipes on Christmas. All right, Christmas pudding with butterscotch sauce over the top of it. Yum. Eggnog and trifle. Now, do you make your own eggnog or do you just buy it at the store? I'm not an eggnog person, so I always buy some at the store and have it in the fridge just ready in case guests come over and really need it. But I would probably doctor it up by adding some bourbon. Here's the Yule Ball chapter, very festive. Booyah base. And goulash. That actually looks really hearty for a snow day like today. That actually looks really good. New Year's. Well, let's check it out. Sure. Chocolate fudge. That's something my grandmother used to make every Christmas. She wouldn't make it in November or any of the other months, but starting the first week of December, she would make her famous chocolate fudge. Spring recipes. We're going to skip ahead. So that's the unofficial, oh, you make your own Puerto Rican Coquito. What is Coquito? Tell me about it. Is it a beverage? Mmm. I'd like some Poquito Coquito, if that's, if that's what it is. Okay, this is not necessarily a holiday baking book, but it is has so many amazing recipes, and it's on sale on Amazon, so I wanted to mention it. It's One Tin Bakes Easy by Ed Kimber. I do have to disclose that this cookbook, the publisher sent us several months ago for free, hoping that we would look through it on Amazon and YouTube. So here I am dutifully looking through it. One Tin Bakes Easy is 26% off today on Amazon. When you see me leaning forward, I'm looking at my tiny little phone that's over there. Oh, I forgot to bring this candle I wanted to show you guys. Shoot. I have a candle in my carousel that is nowhere near me. Well, that was rude. Never mind. We're not going to talk about this. Lot Jolie Muse. Dark berries candle. Back to the cookbook. Foolproof cakes, tray bakes, bars, and bites from gluten-free to vegan and beyond. So I don't have any house guests coming this year because we are snowed in and all the mountain passes between me and my friends are closed. So I'm okay. But I normally would do a whole bunch of baking this week so that people, when they arrive, maybe I'm not going to pull out the showstopper cake until Christmas Day. Anna Raquel says, Coquito is a coconut nog, and I make it with Bacardi rum. Mmm, now I'm thirsty for Bacardi. And I think on Christmas vacation, we're entitled to have a nice beverage at noon. And it's noon half an hour from now. Hmm, I'm thinking about it. One tin bakes easy is the kind of stuff I would kind of bake ahead of time and just have it on the counter. I love their table of contents has the world's largest font I've ever seen in a cookbook. And I appreciate that because I don't have to go digging for my reading glasses. The basics, one bowl and all-in-one cakes, bars and cookies, five ingredient bakes, how convenient, no bake treats, desserts, resources. 
Okay, introduction, la la la. Ed Kimber's uh, The Boy Who Bakes on Instagram, if you want to go check it out. He's talking about sourcing vegan chocolate. Let's get to the recipes, though. I love this cookbook. One bowl and all-in-one cakes. This might be a perfect thing to make with a family member that's visiting because you only mess up one bowl. I add my coquito to my coffee, too. Nice. Speaking of which, I better stay caffeinated. Yesterday, I forgot to switch. Because I'm getting older, I switched to decaf tea about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yesterday, I forgot to switch. So 9 o'clock at night, I was like, Wee! And midnight, I was like, I'm going to read a book in bed. So I went to bed at 2 in the morning. So today, I'm going to switch to decaf maybe at 2 in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. Here's a marble cake. Or maybe you'd like to make grapefruit poppy seed snack cake. That's something I would probably make for New Year's and beyond. I like to make citrusy desserts in January because it's dark and gloomy and there's no fun holiday to look forward to after New Year's. So I pull out all the citrus and make things bright and cheerful. Beautiful rhubarb and cardamom with brown butter streusel made just in your sheet pan. So convenient. That's why they call this one tin bakes easy. A lot of these are just on your baking pan. Espresso caramel cake. Olive oil, pistachio, and lemon snack cake. It doesn't sound very festive, but I do like pistachios. But that way you feel like you're eating something a little healthier before you start just eating tons of fudge and chocolate and ice cream. Banafi poke cake. Let's jump ahead. Ooh, gingerbread cake with fennel roasted peaches. Yum. Those of you just joining us, we're looking through one tin bakes easy. More fruit than cake. Cake. Mm, okay. Lemon and lime courgette cake. Doesn't seem very Christmassy. I'm going to move on. I'm not eating zucchini on Christmas. I'm sorry. Pumpkin sheet cake. No. Oatmeal ginger slice. Maybe for breakfast. Blueberry sour cream bars. Not very Christmassy. Ah, lime melting moment bars. I would serve that on New Year's Day in a heartbeat. Yeah. Jump ahead a little bit. Mm. Wagon wheel bars. Mm. Nah, not my thing. Hazelnut and milk chocolate biscotti. If you have house guests for the holidays, they're going to go through a lot of coffee. Five ingredient bakes, such as sesame milk chocolate shortbread. Brown sugar tahini scotcheroos. Using some more sesame. 60 second clementine cake. 60 second. Thank you. That sounds very convenient. Salted lemon treacle tart. See, treacle, this must be a UK cookbook. Garibaldi biscuits. I hope they're not made out of real Garibaldi fish. Peanut butter bars. Uh, not very Christmassy, but delicious. Summer mango tiramisu. I'm going to skip that. We're getting into the summer. Salted pistachio and rose brittle. That's kind of a Middle Eastern flair. That might be nice, something nice to have on the counter. Not if you have a bunch of old people coming over, though, like really elderly people, like over 80. Their teeth, mm -mm, no. Have something soft, like hazelnut rocher cheesecakes. There you go. Nice. Lemon and raspberry trifle. That's pretty. So that's one tin bakes easy. I'm a big fan of this baking book, cookbook, although I can't remember what I made out of it in the last month. I might not have. I was moving. Ugh. Packing and then unpacking. Whew. I was going to lots of restaurants, to be honest. Okay, can't talk about the candle because I can't find it. All right, I have an interesting book, American Cake, but the cover is different than the one on Amazon. Not sure what's happening. I like my cover better. Maybe this is the British version, but I bought it in the US. It's by Anne Byrne. And it's from colonial gingerbread to classic layer, the stories and recipes behind more than 125 of our best loved cakes, all the way back from 1770, 1903, 1963. So it's a really interesting book, kind of heavy. <laughs> I'm going to cherry pick and go for anything Christmassy I can find. Okay, the chapters are... Woo! Chapter 1, 1630 to 1799, Baking Cakes in Early America. In a fireplace, right? Woo! 
Chapter 2, 1800 to 1869, New Cakes and New Directions. Chapter 3, A Scientific Approach, Baking Powder and Family Farmer. That's going to be a very educational chapter. Chapter 4, 1900 to 1916, Birth of the American Layer Cake. Chapter 5, Baking in the Good Times and the Bad Times, the 40s wartime. Chapter 6, 1946 to 1962, Mid-Century, Tupperware, Bake Offs, and a New Domesticity. Chapter 7 is American Cake Times Are a Changin'. Chapter 8 is the 1980s to 90s. Cakes Born in the USA. Chapter 9, 2000 to the Present. The Cakes of the New Millennium. So this book is heavy. I'm not going to be able to flip through it without hurting my back. I mean, with page by page. So I'm just going to quickly flip to show you some of the gorgeous cakes that are in here. New sizzle cake. Wow. I think if I hold this up too long to go page by page like I did with the last one, I'm going to hurt my back. So gorgeous photos. I saw Betty Crocker. This is, if I could only own one cake book, it would be this one. But part of that is because I'm so interested in food history. Even if I never bake one of the cakes in this book, I want to read about the different decades and how we ate cake then. Anna Raquel over on Facebook says, that American cake book is awesome. She autographed my copy and it has a special place in my culinary library. You are a cookbook collector. I can tell. That's amazing. I don't have any autographed cookbooks. That is American cake. I'm going to set it down here where I don't hurt myself grabbing it. Next up is another massive heavy cookbook. I'm not going to be able to hold and be like, oh, look at this. Too heavy. But we'll flip through. It is probably my favorite baking book. It is so amazing. It's by Paragon Press. Uh, is it? Nope. Oh, here it is. It's faster, you guys. I, I think it is the largest cookbook I have in the house. What is that? Whew. It's by Paragon Press Publishing or Paragon Press Books. So there's not like a specific cookbook author. You own over 7,000 cookbooks. I think you need to join me on my channel. Maybe I should hire you to look through your cookbooks on your channel for me. <laughs> wow, you're a serious collector. I got to say, if I could fully give over a guest room in my home that hardly ever gets used and put a bunch of bookshelves, I could own more cookbooks than I do. I'd like to. Where do you store yours? And do you have them all out or are they in boxes and you get some out seasonally or not to be nosy, but feel free to let me know. So this is beautiful baking recipes from around the world. We'll flip through in a second. I'm just going to try and check out the table of contents. Ah, this is a few years old. It came out in 2016, so not super old. So the chapters go by regions of the world. They start with the North American way of baking. And then uh, lots of recipes. Then they go to the Latin flavor. Then they go to Africa, which is a very short, only three recipes, African ginger cookies, South African milk tarts, and Moroccan country bread. Then we go over to the United Kingdom, the home of afternoon tea. We go to Ireland and then France, the wonders of French baking. That's going to be fun. Anna says, I would be happy to join you. Are you brave on camera? Do you have good lighting and a good microphone? Ooh, this could be fun. Your entire home is a library. All right, do you have an Instagram channel or Facebook? I'd love to see if you've been posting content about your cookbooks. Okay, Baking in the Sun is the Mediterranean chapter, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland chapter, and then uh, Scandinavia. Eastern Europe and Russia, Israel only has three recipes, Jewish honey cake, hamantaschen, and rugelach. Asia. Australia and New Zealand. So this is very comprehensive, ready? It is super heavy. I'm just gonna flip through without hurting my back. Whoa, I saw the word vodka and I went, ooh. Oh, this is gorgeous. So I probably don't own any cookbooks that you don't own. All right, that whew, is bake. Probably my favorite baking book. And I rarely ever use a cookbook stand on the counter, but this book is so big, I do have to use my cookbook stand to kind of keep it open for what I'm looking at because it's so heavy. <laughs> okay, it is $30.99 on Amazon today. Next, let's take a look at Chetna's Easy Baking. 
I love easy baking books and it's 15% off today on Amazon. This one was, <coughs> whoa, need some tea. Start. <coughs> Sometimes when I close a cookbook, pieces of the paper fly in the air and I breathe them in and then I'm like, <coughs> Chetna's Easy Baking with a Twist of Spice. Of course, it's Chetna McCann from the Great British Baking Show or the Great British Bake Off, depending on what side of the pond you're on. The publisher did send us this book earlier this year, right before it got published, so we could look through it. I always have to disclose when we get something free so you're not shocked, like, oh, what? You got it for free and you're trying to sell it to us? Yes. So this is not necessarily the most Christmassy cookbook, but what if your family is tired of the same old, same old recipes every year and you try want to try something a little more exotic? Something from the garden, something indulgent chapter, something savory, something vegan. I love that that's a whole chapter for my vegan friends. Something small and something on the side. And here's the author, Chetna. And <clears throat> something from the garden. This is not going to be very Christmassy. <laughs> because she's doing mango, ginger, and lime cake, but there is a long tradition of having those flavors at Christmas just because it brightens everything up. Check out this pear, chocolate, star anise, and hazelnut tart to tan. I would personally skip the star anise because I don't care for licorice, but that's the spice. Oh, beautiful. The photography is amazing. You're working at your office. All right, I'll PM you. Are you on Instagram? Rhubarb and custard crumble cake. Raspberry and coconut cheesecake. That would go good with your coquito. Pineapple elderflower cake. Beautiful. Maybe not Christmassy, but that could be a nice wintry pick-me-up. I'm going to skip ahead because I can't show you the whole book. This does not look appetizing, but I bet it is stunningly delicious. It's a black tahini honey tart. Hey, Tanya, thanks for joining us over on Amazon Live. Good to see you. We're looking through Chetna's Easy Baking, and I'm chatting with Anna Raquel over on Facebook, Cookbook Diva's channel. I'm also broadcasting to my wine blog today, which I don't usually do. So hello, those of you watching over on PNW Wine Life. Rose, coffee, and chocolate tiramisu. Not Christmassy. Let's keep going. Oh, savory bakes. Chocolate and coconut spiced self-saucing pudding. Happy holidays, Tanya. Merry Christmas to you too. And happy Hanukkah. Rose and cardamom cheesecake. That does not look appetizing. I'm sorry. I wouldn't serve that at Christmas. It looked like, now that's pretty. That's nice. Uh, what else should we look at? Something savory. I like savory bakes. Let's check it out. Chana doll stuffed yogurt bread. Not very holiday wise. Masala chicken pepper pie. Whoa, snow day. Honor Raquel Books on Instagram. Thank you. I will follow you. Curried chickpea cauliflower pie with fenugreek pastry. Oh, I don't know what those are. Something vegan. Here's the vegan chapter. A mini saffron cheesecakes. Cute. Just enough for like four bites, right? Chocolate pistachio and cardamom cookies. Here's uh, something vegan, lentil potato rolls, a savory bake. Potato curry puffs, yum. That would be a nice Christmas appetizer. I don't know why it keeps changing it, but it's on a Raquel books. I'll find you. Thank you. Yeah, because Facebook's annoying, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Masala focaccia. So Tanya, do you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or all of it? Uh, does your family celebrate on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? In my family, when I was growing up, one grandmother got Christmas Eve and the other insisted on having Christmas Day. And my parents were finally like, wait, we're not traveling to see you. You can come see us. We have small children. And so when I had children, we did both. We did Christmas Eve. We would do one present and a nice like easy meal, it could be pizza, like we don't care. And then the big meal is Christmas day after unwrapping everything like crazy. And we kind of did it in the evening. Like the kids could wake up and have their stockings. And then we would start opening presents about four and cooking dinner, five, six, seven. Hey, Mario Vegan Beauty has joined us over on YouTube. I'm glad to see you. Drop your link in the comments so people can follow you. We're looking through Chetna's Easy Baking and there's an entire vegan chapter. And this is Masala Focaccia 
vegan recipe. Isn't that awesome? Hey, hey, naan with garlicky mushrooms. I'm hoping that you're not vegan and gluten-free because that would be even harder. So here's the something small chapter. Anise and walnut rugelach. Awesome. No way. I love it. Yes. Coconut and lime cookies. Anise donuts I would not eat because they're too licorice-y. Nope. She's not gluten-free. Drop your link so we can all follow you. Coffee cream profiteroles with chocolate. I don't like coffee flavors, but I bet a lot of you guys that are watching do. Something on the side. So I wanted to let everybody know that at 1 p.m. today, which is an hour and a half-ish from now, after I end the stream and have lunch and brush my teeth and put my makeup back on, I'm going to be hosting Christmas trivia over here on Amazon Live. I'm going to be giving away a $25 Amazon gift certificate. We're going to chat about Christmas. I'm going to show you. Oh, where did I put it? <clears throat> We're going to talk about this Merry Memories box, 50 heartwarming ideas and activities to celebrate the season. This is so fun. We're going to talk about that on my other show. So I'd love to have you stop by at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. on the East Coast. I know a lot of you have the today off. Mariel says, give me all the gluten. <laughs> Yum. So that was Chetna's Easy Baking with a Twist of Spice. Even though it's not specifically a holiday baking book, I like to use it as such. Next, another Ed Kimber book and another book where I got it for free from the publisher. Thank you, Kyle Books and Octopus Books. Mariel is at Mariel Vegan Beauty everywhere. I'd love to hear what you're working on for the new year. If you can give us a preview. I am a lifelong vegetarian, and so I always ask Mariel, my sister, about vegan makeup options, because I need to know, because I don't want to put any animal products on my face. <laughs> this is Small Batch Bakes by Ed Kimber, and this is what I'm probably going to be baking from for myself, and I'm going to admit, I am going to make a Betty Crocker mix red velvet cake in my bunt pan, because I'm busy and lazy and tired. But I'm also going to bake from scratch because the roads are snowed in and closed. Mariel knows this. I-90 is closed. Stevens Pass is closed. Snoqualmie's closed. Blue is closed. So my guests are not coming for Christmas. <laughs> so I'm going to bake up a storm. And I just started rewatching Lord of the Rings, all of the movies. Last night, I made it through one because I had a lot of caffeine. You're doing a Christmas makeup look right now. The ghost of Christmas present. <gasps> oh, I can't wait to see it. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm glad you stopped by my stream. I hope you'll come play trivia with us in about an hour and a half. Small Batch Bakes by Ed Kimber. Baking cakes, cookies, bars, and buns for just one to six people. And that's nice. Yesterday, I made peanut butter cookies. I made a dozen. But I'm really not supposed to have more than two or three a day. I mean, come on. And I did break one and a half and carefully gave it to my elderly dogs. But they're not supposed to have lots of sugar. But it's Christmas. But now I'm stuck with like eight more cookies. So... They'll be delicious on day three or four, but not as good as they are freshly baked. This is The Boy Who Bakes. Again, check him out on Instagram and probably TikTok. Introduction, blah, blah, blah. Leftover eggs, la, la, la. Okay. Lemon poppy seed meringue tarts. Brown butter salted maple tarts I would probably serve in autumn, but not at Christmas time. I mean, they'd be delicious. But check out the strawberries and cream eclairs. So pretty. Maybe on a Christmas charcuterie dessert board table or buffet. Cookies, bars, and treats. Chocolate peanut butter cookies. This is not the recipe I used yesterday. Oatmeal raisin cookies. Kind of boring. I wouldn't do those during the holidays. <laughs> emergency chocolate chip cookies. Have you ever had an emergency and needed chocolate chip cookies? I have. Those of you just joining us, this is Small Batch Bakes by Ed Kimber. Snickerdoodle Cheesecake Bars. Yum, cookies, says Mariel. Cakes. We appreciate the engagement. Whenever you type something in the chat, it teaches YouTube and in, uh, Facebook and Amazon that you're enjoying the show and want to see more shows like it. So it helps when you chat. And also, it makes my day more fun and less boring. I talk to myself a lot. But I don't usually like talking to myself on camera. This does not look appealing. Black bottom muffins. No, thank you. I'm sure they're delicious. I just, mm, no. I need something pretty like this Japanese jiggly cheesecake with passion fruit butterscotch sauce. 
this is something I would serve after New Year's Eve or maybe on New Year's Eve to be kind of refreshing and less heavy than the other foods. Mariel says, I need those. Cinnamon bun slices could be good to serve your guests Christmas day in the morning or the next day or New Year's day. Old fashioned cake donuts. This, okay, this is my weakness. I can go months without eating chocolate cake or cheesecake or cookies. I'm fine, but donuts, I could eat them every day. Raspberry and lemon mini bunt cakes. That would look fantastic on a Christmas dessert buffet table. And it's just maybe what, five, six bites, the perfect portion size. This is why I love this cookbook, which is $22.99 on Amazon today. Mango pudding could be nice in January when we're tired of all the heavy desserts, but we just want a little sweet and just a little tropical to remind us that the sun will return. By the way, happy Yule, happy solstice. I am really sick of it getting pitch black at four o'clock at night and not getting light till eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm looking forward to getting three more minutes of light a day. Lemon and pistachio posset. You know, I hardly ever hear about possets. I first encountered the word in Little Women, the book. And Little Women, the 1994 movie, is one that I rewatch a couple times throughout the Christmas season. Peanut butter chocolate fondants look burned. Moving on, date night creme brulee. No, that doesn't look appealing, but I'm sure it's delicious. This book really likes the brown blackened desserts. Breads and buns, very colorful book. Mariel says, so pretty. Chocolate and espresso brioche buns. And crumpets, I don't need to make my own crumpets. I do like to make pretzels from scratch. I'm probably not gonna make them at Christmas, but I love that this is a recipe for just a few pretzels. I don't need to make a whole bunch. Sage and onion buttermilk biscuits. Yum. That sounds really good. I see a FedEx truck stopping outside my house, except I don't have an address and can't get mail here. So I think they're lost or stuck in the snow. Well, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Cacio e Pepe stuffed rolls. Cheese and pepper savory rolls. Yes, please. Love it. Okay, FedEx truck is sliding backwards down the hill. I, if I hear a crunch, I will end the live stream and go help them, but I think they're okay. Olive oil and feta quick bread. Flaky pastry, lemon curd, make your own at the back. No, I can buy lemon curd. I don't have that kind of time. That's Small Batch Bakes by Ed Kimber. Next up, we're going to take a little commercial break where I show you an awesome candle that I bought for myself as my Christmas present, one of them. It is by La Jolie Muse. Katie and I love this candle brand. So right now I'm burning Christmas tree scented candles, cranberry, peppermint, you know, holiday spice, etc. But after New Year's, I'm gonna be like, whoo, I'm cinnamoned out. I am Christmas treed out, can't do it. I need something fresh and citrusy and just clean up the house, get rid of all the heaviness and make it lighter. So I will not burn this candle until then. This is orange blossom. Mm. It's soft. It's just refreshing. It's going to make my house smell clean, which my house is not clean because I have two dirty retriever dogs that shed black fur everywhere and they have muddy feet and snowy feet. So this will help. And it's a cute little candle tin and it's kind of, uh, it's not as gray as it looks on camera. It's kind of green. So I have a bedroom that has lots of green and blue in it. So it'll look nice on the counter. And if you're not familiar with La Jolie Muse candles, don't shop for this because you don't know what it smells like. But if you're uh, familiar with their fragrance lines, you know you like it. I'll have to trim the wick because it's too long. It's supposed to be a quarter inch. And then this will burn for over 25 hours. Mariel says, I'm the same way. Yes. I get pepperminted out, although I'm enjoying it right now. And I'm burning extra Christmas tree candles right now because this is my first year with a fake tree. It's a four foot tree from a company that's not Amazon, so I can't say it. <clears throat> so it's a fake tree and it's off gassing some plastic. So I'm burning probably four Christmas tree candles right now <laughs> to make my house smell like a real tree. So that was my commercial break, La Jolie Muse. It is $16.99 on Amazon Live today, and it's made with soy wax. Next up, oh, I'm so excited to look through this Nordic Baker cookbook with you. <laughs> Gotta find it first. Here it is. 
Okay. Oh no, do not start. Oh, that was a close call. Check this out. Plant-based bakes, Mariel, and seasonal stories from a kitchen in the heart of Sweden. A vegan Norwegian Nordic cookbook. What? Is everything in here plant-based? Pretty cool. Now, I am a vegetarian, not a vegan, so if I was reading through a recipe, I could add butter and sour cream to it if I wanted. Let's just flip through really quick, and we'll take a closer look. Whoa, I love the photography. And we're going to learn a lot about the Nordic countries. I see some travel photography, too, here, etc. This is a gorgeous book. I'm so glad I bought it. Publisher did not send it to me for free. Hardy Grant, hint, hello, help. Words and Pictures by Sophia Nordgren. It is $24.49 on Amazon today. It is 18% off. The Nordic Baker. The chapters are Basics, Spring, Summer, Autumn, and Winter. I'm going to skip ahead to winter because that's what we're talking about on this live stream. A Simple Home Inspired by Nature, page 172. Let's jump there. As I jump, I'll let you see some previews. A Pear Tart from the Autumn chapter. Okay, getting there. Ooh, it's a short chapter. No! Okay, carrot cake. That is a Christmas tradition in some countries, not in my house. Winter, here we go. Oh, that was the autumn chapter. Swedish semlor. Mariel says over on YouTube, there are so many great vegan alternatives to make pastries nowadays. Makes life so much easier. But this book sounds amazing. Do they have those amazing cookies with the jam in the middle? Let's find out, but here's Swedish saffron buns, plant-based. Yeah, man, I have some saffron in the house, thanks to Trader Joe's. Did you guys know that Trader Joe's is available on Amazon, by the way, if you don't have a Trader Joe's near you, which I do not, the closest Trader Joe's is a four hour drive away. <laughs> so I stock up every time I go to the nearest big city, which is Seattle, or if I'm desperate, I order Trader Joe's on Amazon, then you gotta pay for the shipping. And the third-party seller that sells it needs to make a fair profit, so it's going to cost more than it would at the store, but sometimes I'm desperate. Okay. Aunt Harriet's plant-based gingerbread cookies. Those are so cute. I really want to get into the kitchen today, and Mariel, I wish we had thought to team up. I'd love to put together on camera gingerbread houses with you. I actually have seven or eight sets in the house right now, including the office ginger, ginger desk. The Friends, Central Perk, and the Building, and an Oreo skating park rink or whatever. I'm not going to eat these, so I'm just going to play with them. Uh, saffron and Almond Biscotti. Lots of saffron in this book, Nord Nordic tradition. A simple home inspired by nature. Uh, gingerbread and lingonberry bunt cake. I actually do have some lingonberries in the house in a jar somewhere. I'm not seeing those cookies, but look at this cute gingerbread house cake using those cookies. I'm not seeing any lizard cookies. <gasps> Meryl says, that would have been so cute. The Batman gingerbread house I wanted sold out. Oh. Now, is gingerbread normally vegan? Hmm. It might be. Caramel candies. I tried making caramel one time. That was not a good experience. One drop of water came down the pan, and I'm trying to keep it out of the caramel, or it's going to seize up the sugar, and it fell in there and destroyed it. I still ate what I made, but it wasn't caramel. Chocolate balls. Pretty. And the oh, thin oat cookies. Too healthy. I'm not eating oat cookies at Christmas. Caramel cookies in a traditional Nordic shape. So this is the Nordic baker. Love, love, love this cookbook. It is phenomenal. It's $24.49 on Amazon Live today. Next, we're going to check out Donna Hay Christmas. But Donna Hay is in Australia. So the cookbook starts off with talking about going for a walk on, and a swim on the beach on Christmas Day. Really? I have six feet of snow in my driveway and can't go anywhere. And you're going to talk about going for a walk on the beach. <clears throat> it makes me a little ungenerous in my sentiment. Okay. I got to get some of these cookbooks out of the way so I can get to Donna Hay. This is a Feasts and Treats cookbook reprint. Her original edition had a little cake on the front, and it was cute, but this is stunningly gorgeous. 
Mariel says there's a great vegan caramel on Amazon. The brand is Hey Boo, if anyone's interested. Oh, nice. I should put that in the carousel. So this book just came out this year, so it's still pretty expensive. I did. I think I had to buy this one. I don't think the publisher sent it to me. Fourth Estate. No, they did not. It is a whopping 9% off on Amazon today for those of you that still enjoy owning physical cookbooks. We are going to skip over the first part of the book. Let me flip through though really quick so you can get a preview. It is the most stunning photography ever. This photographer and food styling artist should win awards. I, oh, look at this wreath. I, woo! If I don't break the cookbook, I would like to make this. Maybe I'll try. That looks amazing. I think I've seen people recreating this wreath on Instagram after they buy this cookbook. I'm not going to attempt it, but it looks so good. So I was flipping through and I got interrupted. Let's start over. It's very glossy. Sorry. So they're starting off with salmon and pork because they're talking about the feast part. The back half of the book is her baking. And a lot of it is out of my pay grade. I'm not that skilled <laughs> to attempt it. But I could do this pie. I don't personally care for meringue, and Mariel wouldn't be able to have the meringue because it has egg whites in it. But look at these beautiful, oh, stunning. These are showstoppers. But uh, most of these are not vegan or gluten-free, FYI. Look how gorgeous this is. They really came up with some creative things. She said, this is the ultimate make-ahead dessert, a decadently creamy white chocolate ice cream topped with tangy raspberry sorbet. That would be a nice lift after lots of heavy food and rich chocolate desserts, etc. I love this cookbook. Ah, let me know if you have any questions about it. I'm going to move on because I'm going to start weeping because this is so beautiful. Donna, hey, Christmas. Now, I noticed that my lights are kind of washing me out. Don't worry about it. The light outside is kind of getting brighter, darker, brighter, darker. So I'm just going to be really washed out and not worry about it. <clears throat> Next, fruitcake. This book is 54% off today. I wanted to be sure to let you know about it. It's only $15 and it is phenomenal. Martha Stewart did the foreword. It's by Jason Schreiber. I've got to see if he's done other cookbooks. I assume he has because it is amazing. Fruitcake recipes for the curious baker. I have bookmarked the spot I want to talk about, but let's start off with a little peek. The publisher is William Morrow. They don't do a lot of cookbooks relatively to other publishers, but when they do, they're holy moly amazing. So the chapters are getting started, constant cravings out of hand, showstoppers, and he's not lying. Woo! All rise, soaked, and then the basics. So let me just flip through really quick. Whoop. So you can get an idea of what this looks like. And then we'll go back to the parts I bookmarked because they seemed very holiday-ish. Stunning. Again, the photographer and food stylist on this really should win an award. So I bookmarked with my post-it note, cinnamon raisin buns that you could bake Christmas morning. Maybe make the dough the night before, set it in the fridge, get it ready. Concord grape focaccia is not something I would serve at Christmas, but I, I just love the idea of that. That sounds really fun. I love savory focaccia, but that sounds fun. Do you want to make your own panettone? Now you have a recipe to do it. He also has a recipe for Rosca de Reyes. Rosca? Rosca. Mm, probably Rosca. Pardon me, Mario. And a recipe for lots of traditional stuff in here. Stolen. Stolen. Don't be stealing it. Oh, and a nectarine kuchen. I would probably serve this in January, maybe New Year's Day or the day after. When my friends come over, usually sometimes the kids go back to school January 2nd, depending on the calendar. Ugh, it's too soon. Ah, Anna Raquel says, Rosca de Reyes is awesome over on Facebook. Chocolate orange bucket. So I like to have my friends over like a couple days after New Year's Eve. We get together. We play board games with the kids. We trade presents that people gave us for Christmas we might not want, like a perfume that doesn't suit me. I could give to my best friend if she likes it, etc. Here is a 
braided um, babka and soaked mm. liquor. So here now, Anna Raquel and I are like, oh yeah, Laura and Adam's wedding cake. These are soaked in liquor. Stout cake. Mm. I think I'll just drink a beer instead. Another dark cake. And oh, this is just a stunning cookbook. I bet Anna Raquel already has fruit cake because she owns 7,000 cookbooks. So that is fruit cake. Next up, this holiday cookies book came out maybe a month ago. I, everyone on Bookstagram, over on Instagram, on Cookbookstagram is freaking out, losing their minds because this is so amazing. If you could only own one holiday cookie baking book, this would be the one. It's very, very complete. It's got everything, including those little jam-filled Linzer cookies that Mariel was asking about. So let's flip through. It's pretty heavy, so I can't probably go chapter by chapter through this one. But you're going to see your favorites, and I'll flip through again because every time I do it, my fingers grab different pages. But as you can see, it I think every single recipe has a photograph, which is very important to me. I cannot cook or bake something if I don't know how it's supposed to come out looking. So I hate cookbooks that have like one picture and then five recipes and then another picture. This is stunning. Let's do that one more time. This is holiday cookies. It's 14% off on Amazon. This would be a great hostess gift. If you're traveling, bring it to grandma. If grandma bakes, bring it to your auntie or uncle. This is stunning. Tons of fun recipes. And I'm not going to hold it up long enough to look through the table of contents, but you can check it out on Amazon. That is holiday cookies. I'm a huge fan of this. I wish it wasn't so heavy. I'm, Katie and I are starting to get neck injuries from holding cookbooks up in her left hands. And Katie's actually left-handed, so she's probably hurting on this side. You need to add the fruitcake one. Oh, yes. All right, holiday cookies. Next. Oh, I have my ring light in the carousel. I'm actually only using one of my lights right now because if I switch this one on, mm -hmm, yep, it washes me out even more. It's a nice bright day. Yay! I think for trivia, I'm going to turn down this newer light and have a little bit less light on my face. I just want you to see the merchandise back there. Speaking of which, I'm using a photography backdrop that I just got out and unfolded. I didn't steam it yet, so you can see the wrinkles. And I have most of the backdrop covered up by this dumb bookcase. But it is a kitchen Christmas backdrop that's really fun. And then I couldn't, I forgot to add my candy cane battery operated Christmas lights to the carousel, but that's what those are. And I wanted to mention for those of you watching over on PNW Wine Life and Style from Washington State. Oh, that's honey pecans. Wrong item. These are cherries for wine by Chukar Cherries, Washington State. These are amaretto or almond flavored Rainier cherries covered in Cabernet and classic dark chocolate. They pair excellently with Mervedra, as I can attest to. Although last night I was having Pinot Noir and thought this is probably, the Pinot Noir wouldn't, would be a little too flabby to stand up to these, so I didn't have any. This would be great with Cabernet Sauvignon. And Merlot, cherries for wine, another nice hostess gift. Although you should probably bring it with wine because by itself, if you're coming to a dinner party and your hosts have been cooking all day and cleaning their house, a little bag of cherries, that's not enough. <laughs> bring a little bit more. Just saying. And I, for, I skipped over something. I wanted to talk about these other candles. Did I delete them? We have one more set of candles to chat about or not. Yes, there they are. Woo! Okay. If you are familiar with Archipelago Botanicals, Fantastic hostess gift, $68 though, expensive. And I hesitate to gift scented items to people if I don't know their taste very, 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 very well. This is something I could give to my best friend because I know she loves these scents, Holiday Spice. Check out how gorgeous they are. They come in this gift box. All you would have to do is put a little gold bow on it and hand it to them and go, here you go. And then it's a little hard to open, so I'm going to do it down here off camera in case I drop everything. Oh, yes. Yes. It was upside down, waiting for me to drop it. <gasps> okay, I'm taking off the wrapping. I want you to see these gorgeous candles. They are identical. They're all holiday spice. Holy moly. 
Anna says, oh, I want those cherries. And Marielle says, oh, I got lots of those last time we were in Wenatchee. The dark chocolate cherries are incredible. Yes. These smell so good. And tonight I'm going to open my plastic blinds and put these along my windowsill. So when cars drive by on this snowy day and it's dark at four, they can see these beautiful candles in the window. And they're a little bit strongly scented. I suspect I'm only going to burn them for about half an hour. And then I'll have to take a break because they're very strong. But I like it. It's holiday spice. And this is exactly the kind of scent I'm going to be sick of on January 1st. So I got a week to burn them all up and get rid of them. But I wanted to suggest these as a hostess gift because they are stunningly beautiful. But again, not everyone can handle fragrances or scented candles or likes the scent. And it's kind of expensive gamble. So maybe just get it for yourself. All right. That is the end of our cookbook stream today. I believe we looked through all the cookbooks that I wanted to. I want to invite you. And let me put the link up on the screen because a lot of you are watching via Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to be doing Christmas trivia today. Let me just create a little banner. www.amazon.com live cookbook. Woo! Hi! Can I type my own address? Okay. There we go. I will be doing Christmas trivia at 1 p.m., which is just a little under an hour from now after I flip my backdrop and have some lunch. I appreciate you guys coming by and chatting with me today. I hope to see you in an hour when we're going to have a very festive, merry time. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you next time.